You know, we may not have heard from Lieutenant Governor McGeehan on her new hire. We have been hearing from a lot of other politicians sending out a lot of statements today. All because the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics published the most recent inflation figures. And guess what? It keeps going up. Over the last 12 months, the Consumer Price Index says we are paying 9.1% more for everything. It's the highest inflation rate the U.S. has seen since the end of 1981. Back when Ronald Reagan was wrapping up his first year as president, you could buy a pound of bacon for $1.20, and a dozen eggs would cost you less than a dollar. 9.1% is a certain strain on our economy for sure, but what about or how about is it hitting Idahoans? Here's Andrew Bartline. <laughs> I look at the meeting with a friend at a coffee shop. Right. It's a small luxury Connie Schroeder enjoys. We live a frugal lifestyle. It's also a comfortable lifestyle. Connie's retired. Her home is paid off. She usually rides a bike. When she does drive, it's a hybrid. I feel I was really pretty lucky at the times when we were working and uh, things were really quite stable economically for a long time. Despite her stroke of luck, Connie says that stability in the economy is fading. It's really very unfair for young people. Uh, they often carry such student loan debt and then the houses are so expensive. This is a reality recent college grad Allison Schaefer lives through every day. It seems like everything around me is increasing in price except wages. Schaefer has to rely on others just to afford the cost of living. I don't want to live without roommates, but I feel like I should be able to if I wanted to. The world just feels like it's burning around me. So the ability of the average worker to buy goods and services is declining. According to Idaho State Associate Economic Professor Carl Geisler, three factors drive the inflation rate we see today. The first he calls demand pull, which is when more dollars are chasing the same number of goods. The second he calls cost push. This is when businesses charge more simply because they can. The third he calls generous corporate rounding. Geisler says this driving factor is unconventional. If you're large enough uh, and you've got significant market share in your industry, uh, some of those firms are adding a little bit on top of what they're already doing. So that's why corporate profits have been higher than usual over the last several months, even adjusted for inflation. Over the last year, the Consumer Price Index shows inflation is at the highest rate since 1981. The average cost of all items over the past year increased 9.1 percent. Certainly, of course, gasoline, but I also notice it in the food. Like all utilities increased, that added on. And Idaho Senator Mike Crapo chimed in. He wasted no time this morning blaming President Biden. The president needs to stop looking for excuses and start focusing on the right kinds of policies that my colleagues have described here in terms of fixing and addressing the inflation crisis. Is it as simple as just blaming the president, the administration needs to figure this out, or is it more nuanced than that? Presidents get too much credit when the economy does well, and they get too much blame when the economy goes sideways. That's because energy is the main driving factor of the inflation we live with today. The CPI shows energy costs increased by 41.6% over the last year. According to Geisler, the inflation rate has actually lowered since March if you discount volatile anomalies, including energy. So whether it's a key ingredient like oil going directly into making plastics, or if you're just using energy to move components and final goods around the country, energy is a critical cost that really pushes other prices up. Geisler says the cost of oil is dictated by a global economy. And there isn't a lot we can do, as our society is highly dependent on oil. Geisler doesn't expect cost push inflation to disappear. If you know we want to get away from kind of this um, oil-driven inflation cycle, we need to do something about moving our economy further away from uh, from the use of fossil fuels. It wasn't Connie's plan originally. It's, oh my gosh! It's but she's already followed Geisler's suggestions for her personal life. So even the gas prices are not affecting us so much. Even though she recognizes it took a little luck to get there. It's hard to give advice in these uncertain times. Um, I, my life has been easier than many of the people of today, I think. Geisler says the Federal Reserve could raise interest rates to slow inflation because that would naturally lower demand. He says the Reserve is following that path. It could provide some relief for at least one of these three inflation factors he's identified. And we know that Senator Crapo has also put forth some suggestions today. And, and his argument is supply and demand. That's what we talked about in this press briefing. If the United States has supplies more oil 
then we can get closer to meeting demand and that should solve some of these problems. That is a whole can of worms to dig into and I know you did some work on that today, and Brian. I'll get to that in just a quick second, but I want to draw attention to that, what uh, Geisler says, the generous corporate rounding. We kind of talked about this, <laughs> that, that basically, if something is charged or costing five dollars, they can be like, "Well, let's just charge six because, oh man, inflation! Whoo!" And it's a, just get away with it because I, I, I guess because they can afford to, or because, as they said, they're large enough in the market. That's just what they do. Yeah, the layman term you hear a lot is corporate greed. You know, yeah. you can charge five ninety for something. Well, why not just round up to six bucks? It's not like somebody's not going to buy something over those ten cents. If you own a big market share, boy, that ten cents adds up, and you're going to make a lot of money. That's true. All right, thank you, Andrew. Great breakdown there. So.